Praise you, Jesus. Son of the Ancient of Days. They're back at the midweek pitch again. This week we're looking in the Old Testament Ecclesiastes, chapter 12. I'll start reading in verse 1. Remember now your Creator in the days of your youth, before the difficult days come and the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them, while the sun and the light, the moon and the stars are not dark. The clouds do not return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house tremble and the strong men bow down, when the grinders cease because they are few and those that look through the windows grow dim, when the doors are shut in the streets, and the sound of grinding is low. When one rises up at the sound of a bird, and all the daughters of music are brought low. Verse 5, Ecclesiastes 12. Also, they are afraid of height, and of terror in the way when the almond tree blossoms the grasshopper is a burden and desire fails for man goes to his eternal home and the mourners go about the street and the mourners go about the streets Remember your Creator before the silver cord is loosed or the golden bowl is broken or the pitcher shattered at the fountain or when the wheel broken at the well then the dust will return to the earth as it was and the spirit will return to God who gave it. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. All is vanity. Wow. Goes a, goes a bit deep there. And we really need to remember, don't we? We always have to remember our Creator. It's something that comes before everything and everyone. Remember now your Creator in the days of your youth before the difficult days come and the years draw near when you say I have no pleasure in them. When those days will come and it's, in, it's uh, inevitable just like uh, Judgment Day, it's inevitable. Uh, heaven and hell, inevitable. Growing old, it's inevitable. And we have to remember our Creator at all times every day and it's best to do it in their youth if that's that's the way it falls for us when I was a youth I did remember the creator but I didn't know the creator but I remembered that I had a creator and I did believe there was a God 
and a Father and a Son and the Holy Spirit. And a few more little things and that there was 12 apostles. And there was good and bad. And I also uh, remembered that I, I had a choice and that was as a sinner. I wasn't as some spiritual man. I titled our message today, Rest, Relish, and Remember. Rest, Relish, and Remember. Remember him who called you and me. Let's remember how powerful he is. Let's remember how knowing he is. and how available and present he is. What he expects from, from you and me, what he has for you, what he has for me. Let's remember how much he loves you and how much he loves me. Hey? So um, I want to go over to Isaiah, just for a tick. Isaiah. Go over to the writings of Isaiah. Just... Isaiah Jeremiah, just just about rhymes, didn't it? Isaiah 26. Isaiah 26, 3. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Hey? He will keep him in perfect peace. There's our rest. We can rest. We can rest. The world is in a position of unrest. Always has been, but it's escalating. It's, it's now escalating like never before. Unrest everywhere. But God... The God who called us, he wants to give us rest. He promises us rest. He says that he will keep you in perfect peace if you put your mind on him. But most people don't want to remember they don't want to remember him. But little, little do they know, if, if they'd only remember him, uh, in every situation, in the good times and the bad, they'd have this beautiful rest. Eh? They'd have this beautiful peace. And the devil, he won't uh, be able to overtake. Many people's lives have ended because they never remembered. They never remembered him who created them for his purpose. Let's just go over to... The New Testament. Let's go to Romans 8. Go to Romans 8 and the verses 28 
And we know that all things work together for good for those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. See? All things work to good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. He called us for his purpose, for himself, because he's God. And he is supreme. But most people treat God like, like the Supremes. Some treat him like a you know the singers, the Supremes? They treat God like a human. Or they treat God like a Supreme Pizza, very cheaply. Our scripture today, remember, now you're created in the days of your youth before the difficult days come. The difficult and the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them. And as you get older, see, you see the people in, in the rest homes, retirement villages, and the large majority, if not nearly all, are at a quandrum. They're, they're just wasting away. Their life is literally over. They might have a bowl, a day of bowls, or they might go down, sit in a room and look at each other or something. But uh, they're in, uh, in the years when they say, I have no pleasure in them. It's not like when they were young, you know, and they're full of beans, invincible. Well, I remember when I was young, the world had just begun and I was happy. I used to wonder about the earth and the trees and how they grew so plenty. Sometimes I think about it, it happens every day. I'm sure that the bad times weren't so bad anyway. Well, I remember when I was young. I remember when I was young, I surely do. My version there of that song. And the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them. The sun and the light, the moon and the stars. Hey? Are not darkened and the clouds do not return after the rain. And everything changes, doesn't it? You start to become weak, feeble, and frightened, maybe, and the keepers of the house are trembling. Hey, things start to grow dim. Well, in today's world, it's different back in my parents' time. There wasn't so much activity back then. It was more of a gracious... Um, anonymous sort of finish to their lives. But now they've got all these activities happening. They're trying to keep the elderly amused, trying to keep them occupied and give them a few laughs on the way out, you know. But there's no laughing in hell. And there's certainly no laughing at the judgment stand, huh? But we can rest. 
we can rest, we, we can have that perfect peace if we just put our minds on him. We really don't need all the activities. <laughs> they need to just load the retirement villages up with Bibles, you know, New King Jimmies, and just split the walls with Bibles, you know, and the Word, and just go in and praise the Lord and read the Word and shout to the rooftops, you know. Yeah, but no, it's not happening that way uh, in, in such a troubled world, in, in such a world without, un, without any sort of rest on any quarter. So let's remember, let's remember, let's remember him. Remember now your creator. It doesn't talk about remember now all your friends and family. It says remember now your creator in the days of your youth before the difficult days. Difficult days will come for us all. But I'm geared up. Uh, I'm ready. I'm full of the word. I'm letting the word dwell in me richly that I may rejoice. Hey? I may rejoice Always, and I won't come to that place where I have no pleasure in uh, my days. But there's always, there's always rejoicing in the Lord, because Paul said it, it. It was as a command: rejoice in the Lord always. The Lord told him to tell the people that. Rejoice in the Lord always. So, a lot of people may not have a, a lot of money or any money. They might have, have a big house, or nice house, nice cars and motorcycles and friends. But at least everyone can rejoice in the Lord always. Every man, that's the beauty, that's the wonder of him, that's the wonder, the wonder of Christ, when no one else can understand me, when everything I do is right, he gives me peace and consolation. See, the way the, the Lord designed everything, the way he designs things, that everyone can have a shot, everyone can have a turn, everyone can have the same, him. Huh? Elohim, we can have him. Because he is my peace. He can be your peace. Just remember there's a creator. Remember. And if you can do that in the youth and, and go forward and just in, add to that as you go, by the time you reach a ripe age, you're good. Huh? You'll be sitting back there at 90 year old saying, He is my peace. He's broken down every wall. He is my peace. He is my peace. He is my peace. 
He's broken down every wall. He is my peace. Jesus is my peace. So cast your cares on him. For he cares for you. As you're having a cup of tea. Oh, by the way, all the walls have been torn down by a cyclone. But if you're still sitting in your lounge, singing, He is my peace, there's no walls. You've got open air viewing. <laughs> You got open air viewing, and everyone can see you sitting there in your lounge. There's no more roof. There's nothing. It's just an open air display of the furniture. Everything else is destroyed. Your stove is down the road somewhere, and everyone's just looking on. <laughs> but they say, who's that over there singing? Here's my peace. And drinking a cup of tea in the midst. Well, we can rest, we can relish, and remember. We can remember those three things. We'll be laughing all the way to the pearly gates. Rest in Him, rest, chill, relish. Relish in him. You know, I, I remember when I was only a young and going to school, and sometimes me mum used to make me relish sandwiches, and I used to relish in the relish sandwiches. I used to like those sandwiches, but I did like pie day much more. And mum would give me a few coins and say, you can get yourself a pie today. <laughs> oh, I thought it was, what could you say? That I won the lotto. And uh, once a week was pie day at school. But I did like the rally sandwiches, I must say. I used to relish them. We can relish, relish in the Lord. Right? Relish in the Lord. And remember, remembering all the good things for the good times, remembering all that He's done for you and done for me. There's so much He's done for me, I can't count it. But I remember, and when situations arise, I remember, I have, a, I have a creator, I have a minder, hey? who keeps me in perfect peace. If my eyes are on him, if I keep my mind stayed on him, And staked on him. I, re I remember him who called me. I rest in him who called me. I relish in him who called me. I, I remember how powerful he is. And I rest in that he is all powerful. And I... Uh, Remember how knowing he is and how uh, omniscient. I relish in that. I, I can rest in that. I find peace in that. Because if he's all-knowing, he knows what I'm going through. He knows you better than uh, you know you, if you know what I mean. I, I like to remember and reflect how available he is and how present he is, yeah? And how um, 
willing he is. I can relish in that. I, I can rest in that. With, re, with remembrance comes a lot of joy. Like some people remember when they were young and the world had just begun and they were happy. They'd be wondering about the earth and the trees and how they grew so plenty, you know. And they look back and remember and think, well, the, the bad times weren't so bad anyway. Hey? And they like to reflect and remember and the good times and their friends and remember the days in the old schoolyard they used to cry a lot you know with a bit of Cat Stevens and uh, but the Lord wants us to remember him hey he seems in these days so much like the forgotten God. <laughs> they just forgotten him, huh? Eh? He's the forgotten God, but there's plenty of other gods making a killing. You know the Buddhas and the the um, Allahs and the you know the celebrities. They're making a killing. They're getting all the attention. I tell you what, Father's not happy about it, and nor is Jesus, or the Holy Ghost. Boy, oh boy. Because they're all, all powerful. They're all knowing, and they're all present. They're omnipresent. And they just, I tell you what, they're wrath. God is wrath. Because people are given all the attention, paying all the attention to all these created beings. And, and well, some aren't even created, they're just myths. <laughs> but uh, everyone's bowing down before them. I mean, we've got Big Red coming up. He'll be arriving soon. And... Uh, Santa. Santa will be arriving to dig his claws into your money. <laughs> hey? I'm sounding a bit like Precious Pup lately, aren't I? <laughs> but uh, that's unintentional. Um, he's going to dig his claws into your bank account and your credit card will be blown out. Huh? And what for? What for? He won't be able to keep you. When the days draw near when you have no pleasure in them. How's Santa going to keep, keep you when the grinders cease? Because they are few and you start losing all your teeth. Eh? And you become like those who look through the window. Looking out the front, you know, they're afraid to go out, they're just sitting there looking, they can't go out, some of them, they're just, their body's racked with pain. They, arthritis and everything else. And some of them got dementia and they just sit there and stare through the window, you know. And um, dimly. I'm not talking about in the spirit, I'm talking about in the natural. Because we all look through a mirror dimly. Uh, through a window dimly, I shouldn't say. And, uh, yeah. The sound of grinding is low because they they're no longer eating their food, they're probably drinking it. <laughs> They've probably got Uncle Toby's oats blended. Spooning it because 
they're not chewing anymore. It's a lot easier just to be on the liquid food. And, and, and what are all these gods going to do for, for them, for the people then? How can they joy them up and give them peace and assure them and secure them and comfort them by the power of the Holy Ghost? How are they going to do that? Because their God is a cow. Or their God is a monkey or something. Right? Uh, or their God is their possessions. How's their possessions going to do that? They've got these wonderful cars and motorcycles and sheds full of them. They can't ride one bike or they can't drive one car. They're all just sitting there. So we can rest and relish and remember it. Uh, him, the great I am, the I am he, the one that was and the one that is. Eh? And when it says we, we remember them, the relishing and the rest comes. The rest follows on after remembering, and then the relishing. Hey? We have to remember what he, he, he expects from us. He, expects, he wants us to love him. Hey? And we know, Paul said to the Romans, we know the Roman uh, followers of the Christ. We know. Just bear with me for a minute. I just want to read who he's talking to exactly. Romans 1, 7, To all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, Not sinner saints, saints, beloved of God, called to be saints. He says, We know that all things work to good. It doesn't matter whether you're young, it doesn't matter whether you're middle aged or you're old. Everything's going to be working for you, everything's going to be working to good for you. If you remember him, you'll rest up and you'll relish up and you won't be down. Hey? You won't be down at all. When you, as you get older and just the sound of a bird may wake you up. One rises up at the sound of a bird. Huh? What do you think of that? And they're afraid. Verse 5, Ecclesiastes 12. And they are afraid of height and of terror in the way. Easily moved and rattled. Huh? Everything becomes a burden. Even down to the grasshopper, desire failed. You have no desire. Not even a streetcar called desire. <laughs> Not even that. The old car can make them happy. No, those days come to us all. Hey. And, so, and then the man goes and the woman to their eternal home, wherever that will be. And, and the funeral, funeral, they have a funeral. I won't be. But they do. That's the norm. Hey? 
that's the usual, like the Jason Recliner thing. They have a funeral and people go there. They say how great he was and they didn't even know him, but they know there's going to be a good feed. And they just... They just do a Johnny Cash for the day and put on the black and roll up. No one knows who's who in the zoo. And then they go and have a feed in the wind and the person that's died knows no different because they're dead. They don't know if one rolled up or 1,000 rolled up. <laughs> and people don't look at it that way because in a lot of the cases they want to get the, they want to get some sort of glory for going there and arranging it, having their say. Spotlight's on me, here we go. I remember Bill. Oh, you know. He was such a wonderful bloke, but he was a mongrel, you know, actually. You know, I remember, yeah, he did this and he did that. and Oh, wow. He'll be up there looking down. <laughs> Same old story. He'll be in football heaven, you know. Then they auction off his stuff. He's gone now, right? Uh, let's get the auction moving. Six thousand dollars, six thousand dollars, six hundred fifty thousand dollars. Man on the red, man on the red. Six thousand, five hundred, five hundred. Any better than that? We can we go higher than that? Six thousand dollars for Billy's football boot, and that's life. That's life. That's life. That's what all the people say. <laughs> I'm just gonna pick myself up again and try. Eh? That's life. As they know it. It's certainly not Jesus. And the mourners go about the street. Remember your Creator, verse 6, Ecclesiastes 12. Before the silver cord is loosed and the golden bowl is broken, the pitch is shattered at the fountain, the wheel broken at the well. That is, that's curtains, verse 6. Hey? Silver cord is loosed. Hey? That's it, life is finished. Life has finished. The golden bowl is broken. The pitch is shattered at the fountain. There's no more life. No more water. No more nothing. The wheel is broken at the well. It's over. No water, no life. He died first, so to speak. Eh? Before the silver cord is loosed. It's like a... You got the... Uh, what ties us to the soul and this body. And it's loosed. It's cut, and no longer is the soul connected to this earthly body. Hey? And the spirit returns to God. The silver cord, see? The golden bowl is broken. And God then decides, doesn't he, where we will head. The wheel broken at the well. You've seen those old Western, old Western movies and, you know, Laredo, they come into town, they hear the hooves clunk, clunk. 
And then the the well, the tumbleweeds roll, and then the and the well dried up, and there's no one round. It's all dusty, and I always think of that when they talk about the wheel broken at the well, the picture shattered at the fountain. There's nothing left. Hey, but dust. And then verse 8, Vanity of vanity, says the preacher, all is vanity. Hey? And in your own time, you can read on and, and it goes into the heavy duty about remembering you know, why ultimately we have to remember and... and understand that uh, there's going to be a judgment. Ecclesiastes 12, 9, and moreover, because the preacher was wise, he taught the people knowledge, and he pondered and sought out and set in order many sayings and proverbs, proverbial sayings. He'd done that. Uh, for the people, so that they could remember, rest, and relish, hey? Eh? And rest, relish, and remember. The preacher sought to find acceptable words, and what was written was upright. If it's upright, good, give it to the people. Are they acceptable before the Lord? Good, give them to the people. Is it truth? Give it to the people. Verse 11, Ecclesiastes 12, the words of the wise are like goads, sharp sticks. And the words of scholars are like well-driven nails given by one shepherd. See that? They'll be able to fix and establish and stabilize the words of scholars, of learned, spiritually learned men. I like that. They'll establish you, they'll fix you upon the rock. Right, they're given by one shepherd. There's only one shepherd that can give you the wise and scholarly. The wise and the scholarly. scholarly. The wise and the, the knowledge and understanding. There's only one shepherd. He, he is Jesus. Hey? He is Jesus. God gave his son. They call him Jesus. He's the great shepherd. Ecclesiastes 12, 12 says, And further, my son, be admonished by these. I'm making many books. There's, there's no end. And much study is wearisome to the flesh. And there's books going out every day. And there's books, 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 books. They buy them. You know when I walk into a bookstore, which I don't, but I, I did years and years, decades ago, I walked in to a Christian bookstore and I was at it. I was just phased out. 
I didn't know where to look. All of a sudden, I just became overpowered. It was like I, I was having a panic attack. <laughs> and uh, I just looked around. I thought, what the? You know, what is this all about? I thought, we, we got a creator who cuts to the chaser through the simplicity of the Son, the Christ. What is this? What is all this? You know, all these opinions of men and women. Right? Never did take to it, you know. I just stuck with the book. Because we're the people of the book, as the Muslims would think. You're of the Bible, you're the, one of the people of the book. They're not happy with that, even though they say different. Making many books, there's no end. There's no end. Everyone's writing books. Oh, they were on TV, then they wrote a book, because they were on TV. Then they wrote a book about their life. Oh, dear, boring. Hey? I'd rather listen to a decent, honest testimony of how um, Jesus moved in someone's life by the call of Father and empowered the pe person by the the Spirit of God, you know, any day. But it has to be honest and straight, you know, can't be tampered with. Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. That's the whole matter of life. Eh? That was the... Um, Job, the prophet, said... He said that the whole... Um, the root of the matter was in him. Eh? He's talking about the root of the stem of Jesse. Jesus. <laughs> the root of the matter is in me, he said. Be afraid of the sword for yourself. Because the root of the matter was in um, Job... I'm going to go over there and read that. And um, let's just go over there to Job. Whoops. 19. Job 19. That's life. That's life. That's what all the people say. I just pick myself up again and try. Job 19.23 Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book, that they were engraved on a rock with an iron pen and lead forever. The Lord done better than that. He put it, his words that the Lord gave him in his, the Lord's book. Job 19.25 For I know that my Redeemer lives and he shall stand at last on the earth. I suppose that would be the, the Mount of Olives. And after my skin is destroyed, this I know, that in my flesh I will shall see God whom I shall see for myself and my eyes shall behold and not another how my heart yearns within me if you should say how shall we persecute him since the root of the matter is found in me Ooh. be afraid of the sword for yourself 
for wrath brings the punishment of the sword, that you may know there is a judgment. See? Even he said, you've got to remember there's a judgment. So you better make sure you tidy up your act. <laughs> better still, a better word would be behaviour, not act. Yeah, it's a difficult word that in an act sort of little, has a pretentious sound. But they got the book of Acts. Um, yeah. The root of the matter was in Job, in God. My Redeemer lives. And he said, the day's coming when you're going to see God. In his, in, in his body, the immortality will be like him, but uh, we'll never be him because he's the creator and we're created. See? Ecclesiastes 13, uh, 12, 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter where we left off the whole matter. The matter was in Job. Uh, God's got everything tied up. He knows what he's doing. And uh, I tell you what, if the Bible and the God thing is a, is a myth, we're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> But I, I don't believe that for one minute. I believe every word the Lord says. I have not just belief, but witness. I have belief, I have witness and confirmation and Holy Ghost assurance. Ecclesiastes 12, 30, and fear God, keep his commandments. See that? Fear God. Keep his commandments. Now, is that a is that a big complicated um, NASA program? Hey? Fear God, keep his commandments. We're doing the fear of the Lord series. Next week's one hundred and two. One hundred. And two part, one hundred and two part. We started off with one part, and the Lord gave me a hundred and two. Wow. How great thou art, how great thou art. Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is man's all. That's all you can do. All the rest, it's just window dressing, really. But if we don't fear God and keep his commands, where shall we stand? On the judgment day, we'd, we'd stand damned. Ecclesiastes 12, 14, For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Scary. No. Not if you've sorted it out with him, up to the light you have. You can't repent of sin you don't know. But you do hear religious people doing that, don't you? Hey? It's just so wonderful, you know, to remember that the Lord, he's provided a whole new atmosphere for everyone, even though we haven't even left planet Earth. A whole new, the born-again experience, born again from above, kicks in the moment we repent and ask the Lord, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge you, Lord, as Lord. I know I'm a sinner. 
Please forgive me of all my sins and come into my heart right now and save me from sin, self, Satan, the wrath to come and hell fire. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. And that just, it's so brief, it reminds me uh, of Ecclesiastes 13. Fear God, keep his command. See how brief and simple. But the old devil, he, he likes to steer us away from the simplicity of the Christ. Hey, he likes to steer us away. If you remember your creator, I don't care how old you are, you remember him today, remember that there is a creator who is omnipresent, omniscient, all-knowing, all-present and all-powerful, omnipotent. If you remember that, and, and that he... Um, drew up a plan, engineered a plan of rescuing you. Huh? Look, this is greater than the Great Grand Canyon Rescue episode. Huh? Um, that was, I think it was on Neil Young's Harvest album, The Great Grand Canyon rescue episode <laughs> hey yeah hey hey my my I'll, uh, Neil Young used to sing rock and roll will never die once you're gone you can't come back. Hey, hey, my, my. The king is gone, but he's not forgotten. This is a story of Johnny Rotten. Hey. Russ never sleeps. It wasn't the harvest album at all. Russ never sleeps. But, uh, yeah, getting back to remembering and relishing and resting. Very simple, right? That we do that now. That, that we do what our Creator says now. And we're born again from above. And it all kicks in, doesn't it? The new life, the joy, the relishing, you know? You can relish in the Lord while you're eating relish sandwiches, even. <laughs> huh? With this a whole new atmosphere. Whole new atmosphere. Wherever you may be. He goes with us. We take him with us, so to speak. He's indwelling. The Lord is indwelling. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. <laughs> eh? Rejoice, rejoice, O oh saint. O rejoice, rejoice, O disciple. Lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ, the King. God's going to bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. And what does Psalm, let's go to Psalm uh, 41, sorry, 
Psalm 46. Here's something to relish about. Psalm 46, one, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Verse two, therefore we will not fear though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, there is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God. There is a river that flows from God above. There is a mountain that's filled with his great love. Come to the waters. There is a vast supply. So, the Lord Jesus uh, is telling the old devil... <laughs> That he's looking after his people, isn't he? There is a river whose stream shall never, or sh uh, whose stream shall, I was going to say, never make, never go dry. There is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her; she shall not be moved. Though the earth may tremble and the heavens fall. We shall not be moved, no, no, no. We shall not, we shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved. Although the earth may tremble and the heavens fall, we shall not be moved. Jesus is my brother, I shall not be moved. Jesus is my brother, I shall not be moved, although the earth may tremble and the heavens fall, we shall not be moved. Hey, we can rest in that. You know, people, they might, want to, they might find their rest in a rest home, but I find my rest in him. God is my refuge, he's my resting place. And strength and strength. A very present help in trouble. Very present, not present. Hey? Some people trust in houses, some people trust in horses, some people trust in their strength. But I trust in God's strength. Hey? I trust that he is ever near, even in dwelling. <laughs> we take him with us, no matter where we go, he's in dwelling. You never walk alone when you walk with God, amen? We never walk alone when you walk with God. Wonderful, eh? And of course, uh, our old favourite uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight, come to me, all you who labour in a heavily laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. So. When we remember, we remember the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We remember what Father done. He gave us his Son. He gave us his Son. He gave his Son an offering. He 
gave his son as as the uh, the full guy, so to speak. He he gave his son as the uh, the offering for everyone's sin. So how great is the son? How great is Jesus? Father didn't say uh, in John three sixteen. For Jesus so loved the world that he gave himself. Is that what he said? That who would ever believe on him would not perish but have everlasting life. It doesn't say that. It says God. It's talking about Father. God gave his Son. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Just to have that word son there, you know what the father is, is talking. You know that it's the father they're relating to in the script, John 3.16. Because the word son is there. Where there's a son, there's a father. Huh? Every mother's son fought with the law and the law has won. Every mother's son fought with the law and the law has won. Well, Jesus wins all the time because he's the great winner. I run with the winner. I run with the winner so much and, and I admire the winner so much some call him the victor. I like to call him the winner. I am so proud of the winner, Jesus, who gave his life for me. I tattered his name on me, on my arm. But I didn't do it. I got it done properly because it's for the winner. Eh? I got it on my left arm and my right arm. On my left arm I got Jesus free. And on my right arm, I've got property of Jesus. You say, where's that scripture? Property of Jesus, uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 20. Okay, let me read that. 1 Corinthians 6, 20. I'm just so proud of uh, Jesus. I love him. I honestly love him. Right? What's it say? Get between the pages here. 1 Corinthians 6 20. Yeah. It says in my Bible that. Uh, for you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. I know, I can hear him. I can hear him yelling. But in the Old Testament it says you're not allowed to have tattoos and ink on your skin. Oh, go away, you Pharisee. I'm glorifying Jesus in my body. I glorified Jesus in my body when I was set on fire. I bear the marks of Christ in my body when I was set on fire by the Muslim from Saudi Arabia. I'm blessed. The Spirit of God and the glory rest upon me. Hallelujah. Hey? I'm with the winner. I was bought with a prize. I am the property of Jesus. <laughs> Hey, property of Jesus. I am a Jesus freak. What do you mean Jesus freak? Where's that scripture? Let me show you. Let's go over to Pedro. 1 Peter 2.9 But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own freaky people. No, his own special people. 
that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. Some versions say uh, special people, some say uh, peculiar people. Peculiar relates to um, strange, freaky, weird. When someone says, oh, he, that guy's a freak, it's because he's he's out, uh, outside the gate, you know what I mean? He's he's out there. <laughs> That's why they want to kill the people of the way in, your, in the book. Um, because they were nothing like the people of the world. They found any, I like the way that it says, they found any of the way, they'd kill them. That was Saul. Saul was tied up in that, wasn't he? If they found any of the way. Uh, they would look. Uh, and um, to destroy them some way or other. I'll just see if I can pick up that scripture. It'd be nice. Uh, <coughs> in Acts 9, verse 1, Then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asking letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found any who were of the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound, and tie them up, bring them bound and handcuffed, them, so to speak, in our language today, to Jerusalem. Right? Jerusalem was a place where they just hated the truth. <laughs> That's why Peter said to Jesus, you don't go down to Jerusalem, are you, Jesus? They're going to take you out. Jesus said, you get behind me, devil. You're not mindful of the things of God. He, he called him the devil. <laughs> he called Peter the devil. I know a few Peters that are the devil too. But anyway... Verse 2, asking letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus so that if he, if, if, if he found any of the way. That's how rare they are. They're like freaky people. Huh? And the signs of long-haired freaky people need not abide. So I took my hair up under my hat and I went in to ask him why. He said, you look like a fine, upstanding young man. I think you'll do. So I took off my hat and said, imagine that. Me working for you. Oh, side, side, everywhere it's side. Do this, don't do that. Can't you read the sign? Hey? Right? Jesus freak. Ah, he's a Jesus freak. He's always on about Jesus. What a nutter. That's the way, I, I've been called out by Christ, so-called, I have to say so-called Christians. But then again, they are Christians, aren't they? They're not of the way. They're not disciples of Jesus. Because they'd, they'd be disciplined. They're... Christians today are the most undisciplined people I've ever come across. I had more discipline than the pub. <laughs> I, they're the most undisciplined people. Dear, dear. Cursing and cussing at you, railing on you. Right? Yes, I'm a Jesus freak and property of Jesus and proud of it. I believe it's time to make a stand beyond making a stand. 
just let people know who's who and what you stand for. Sit, don't shrink them back in the corner of some uh, Santa Claus family first uh, traditional cultural church hey, that pleases the community. And when you got the community, when you got the community slapping you on the back and you run a church, I tell you what, you're in a bad shape. You're in bad shape. According to scripture. You got the community slapping you on the back, saying what a good boy you are. An ungodly, unsaved, sinful, rebellious community slapping you on the back. Well, you ain't saying anything contrary to what they're saying. And here we have it in Acts 9 too. They found anyone of the way, they bind them up and bring them to the slaughter. That was Saul who became Paul. Hey? A message today. Rest, relish and remember. And if we do remember, we'll have that rest and we'll be relishing, even if we don't have any relish sandwiches. <laughs> yes, but I did like the relish sandwiches. But once again, like I said, Pi Day was my day. <laughs> hey, Pi Day was my day. Glory to the Lamb. Oh, I tell you. And uh, 1 Thessalonians. Let me go over to 1 Thessalonians. <coughs> 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians 5, 24. He who calls you is faithful, also will do it. Okay? Let's remember he's faithful. Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. <coughs> All that I've needed, thy hands hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter, springtime and harvest, sun, moon and stars in their courses above. Okay. all join together and rejoice and celebrate and remember what he done at the tree eh? and you reflect how he hung there for me and you and us and them and all who would call upon his name that we may have might to fight the fight of faith faithfully for father to the finish Amen. Rest, relish and remember. Oh, look, only a Jesus freak, only a Jesus freak would, would operate on those terms. Hey? I was looking up uh, motorcycle clubs and gangs and and see what they have to say about their club and what they value, you know, they value respect and honour and uh, what else? One of them said we respect, honour and um, brotherhood. Couldn't help think of what the Lord gave me decades ago, gave me a revelation of Honesty, truth, and humility with Jesus as preeminent. That's Jesus, the Christ Ministries mission. The freaky people. <laughs> Honesty, truth, and humility with Jesus as preeminent. Think about that one. Eh? 
honesty, truth, and humility. Look, if you got those three, right? And uh, your honesty is Jesus style, truth is Jesus style, humility is Jesus style. He must be preeminent. You're laughing all the way to the pearly gates. And it's my belief that only a Jesus freak will enter. You'd have to be sold out. The scriptures say so. You gotta be a Jesus freak to enter. Hot, hot. You know what it's like when it's hot and you know what it's like when it's cold. Everyone knows what it's like, it's hot. We live in Australia and it gets hot. I used to work for Italian concreters. I have many, many jobs. I worked for a lot of men before I came into the ministry. But I worked for a, a lot of men and, and done a lot of different work. And these Italian concreters used to work it to the bone in nearly 40 degree heat out west, west of Rockhampton and doing stormwater drains, I tell you what. You know, these were huge. <laughs> We'd do 12 hour days and when the noonday sun would come, whoa, between 12 and 2.30. I tell you what, guys used to fall out. They'd pick them up out of the concrete. <laughs> it was wasn't for the faint hearted. I know what hot is and I know what cold is. Because I used to live in Tasmania and my wife knows what cold is, she used to live in Germany. It's breaking as he joint. And hot is hot and cold is cold. And when you hot, you hot. And when you not, you not. So only the Jesus freaks are going to enter. Only those who are hot. Because Jesus said so in, Ecclesi in, in, in Revelation 3, 16. I'm going to finish now. And I'm going to go to Revelation 3, 16. And we'll go out there. Hmm? Read it word for word. Revelation three sixteen. So then, because you are lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I'll spew you out of my mouth. Hey. Because you are lukewarm. I'll spew you out of my mouth. People have said to me for, for decades, oh yeah, but you've got to read on. You know, God um, chastens those whom he loves. Is it? <laughs> Actually, it, it makes it look worse, doesn't it? Because he's going to spew out those that he loved who don't repent. So it just gets worse. When people try to cover things up, people try to add to, take away, lie, it just makes it worse and worse and worse. It's like the oneness, heretics, the modalists. They just lie, lie, lie. And they come to these scriptures, like the whole chapter of John, chapter 17, and they, their tongue sticks to the top of their mouth. They don't know what to say. When you come across a oneness believer, a modalist, and they believe that Jesus is Jesus, Jesus is Father, and Jesus is the Holy Ghost. They believe um, like the Jews and the Muslims, um, <laughs> basically, you know, there's no, uh, there's only one God, 
but they got different views on that, you know. The Muslims don't believe in the Father, Son and Holy Ghost. And the Jews, they don't accept Jesus as Messiah. So it's all topsy-turvy. And the oneness believe that Jesus is Jesus, Jesus is Father, Jesus is the Holy Ghost. But when you tell these oneness, you, get, you explain word for word what John chapter 17 means. Look, they can't. They can't explain it. It means Jesus has a Father. Because <laughs> all through the chapter, John 17, Jesus has a Father. Jesus is talking about his Father. Right? And there's a pile of other scripture too. Then you've got Father, Son, and Holy Ghost in Revelation uh, 3, 5, 12, and 21. So, but it's because they're not Jesus freaks that they don't know that. They don't understand. They're just religious. Dry, dead religion. There's no joy there. Yeah. Just dry, dead religion. Fear God, keep his commands. Rejoice in the Lord always. If you remember him, you're going to rejoice. You're going to relish. You're going to rest. You're going to run, not get weary, walk and not faint. Huh? You're going to man up with wings. Uh, like a, um, definitely not a bald eagle. You got a man up with wings, uh, uh, like a wedge tail. That's the Australian eagle in a wedge tail eagle. Love that wedge tail. Beautiful. I reckon the wedge tail looks so far more aggressive and more powerful than the golden eagle or the, the American Americans use on their emblem. The wedge tail. He, he, he looks savage, you know. He looks so uh, dominating and so uh, sovereign, the wedge tail. So rugged. <laughs> but anyway, um, our message is done, our teaching is done for the day. It's only for the moment, but when I close down, you can go and read more. And I'm sure the Lord gave you something of your own as I was ministering. But remember him. Remember to remember. Remember to relish in him. Remember to rest in him. Remember he's all-powerful. He's all-knowing. He's all-present. He's there for his saints, the people of the way, the Jesus freaks. Amen. I give you all the glory, Jesus. Thank you.